All right, here's the thing. We're putting forth all of this effort into making sure that we look good, making sure that we feel good, but we're forgetting about our organs. And that's exactly why I want to do this video because I want to talk about something that's becoming a big problem today. That is fatty liver disease. Here's the thing, you don't have to be an unhealthy person to have a fatty liver. We're seeing a lot of fatty liver instances occurring now simply because we are now seeing all the implications of the high carb, lower fat, restricted calorie diets from 20 or 30 years ago. People think you have to be eating this grossly high fat diet and terrible kinds of foods in order to have a fatty liver, but that's not necessarily the case and I'm going to break it all down. So what exactly is a fatty liver? Fatty liver is also known as something called hepatic steatosis. Steatosis literally just means the accumulation of lipids in a cell that really shouldn't be accumulating there. And hepatic is just a word for liver, so basically fatty liver. Now what actually constitutes technically a fatty liver? It's when 5 to 10 percent of your liver's weight is made up of fat. That's it, plain and simple. Now how does this happen? How do you end up acquiring fat in your liver? Well, it happens through something known as de novo lipogenesis. De novo lipogenesis is the process of converting carbohydrates into fat. So you don't get a fatty liver from consuming fat, you get a fatty liver from excess carbohydrate consumption that's getting converted into fat through de novo lipogenesis. It basically means that your body's unable to use all the fatty acids that are being generated from carbs and they're having to get stored somewhere because we don't just excrete them naturally, we either store them or we excrete them through a different kind of oxidation pathway but in this case, they're storing in the liver. Now, why is this bad? Because later on, it can scar your liver. If you have a fatty liver, it starts rendering the cells somewhat useless, so they scar, very similar to an alcoholic cirrhosis. We don't want that occurring. You don't even have to touch a drop of alcohol to have a fatty liver, but you can still end up with the long-term effects, the same as someone that's drinking a whole lot of alcohol. So let's get right down to it. What are four easy ways that you can start taking back control of your liver, or at least preventing the hepatic steatosis that could cause a big problem in the future. The first one is super obvious, and you're probably gonna turn off the video saying, this guy's just Captain Obvious and this is nothing I didn't know, but it's chill out on the drinking. Plain and simple. But here's what's happening with the science. Every time that you consume alcohol, your liver's prioritizing that alcohol. When it's prioritizing that alcohol, everything else takes a back seat. That means lipid metabolism, that means sugar metabolism, all that takes a back seat which means that you have much more of a conversion to fatty acids that aren't going to be utilized, they're going to further oxidize or not be oxidized, and actually hang out in your liver. So plain and simple, you drink alcohol, your body metabolizes alcohol, that means more carbohydrates get stored as fat in the liver. So just give it a break for a little bit so your body can actually recover. I'm not saying you have to quit cold turkey or you have to go forever, you just need to take a little bit of a break if you know that fatty liver is an issue for you. Okay, the next one is one that is going to turn a lot of people off, but I want you to hear me out entirely and that's to chill out on the fruit, okay? I don't say cut it out entirely. I don't say that fruit is bad. Fruit is amazing. It's definitely nature's gift to us, but we need to be consuming it in moderation. And people that are consuming copious, copious, copious amounts of fruit are those that are more likely to have a fatty liver because it works like this. Fructose is metabolized differently from other carbs. It's absorbed through something known as the portal vein, and the portal vein takes that fructose directly to the liver like straight shot, light rail system, just boom. Okay, normally we consume carbohydrates, it goes through a different enzymatic process, we have our blood sugar elevated, we have all this thing happening. All of a sudden with fructose, that doesn't matter. It takes the train straight to the liver and it also heightens de novo lipogenesis because fructose elevates the proteins and the enzymes that stimulate de novo lipogenesis. So what does that mean? It means that fructose has a highway to getting converted into fat because that's what it's there for. Fruit is designed to actually help fatten us up. However, that isn't always the case. I'm not saying that fruit is bad, but if you are someone that is worried about a fatty liver or you have a fatty liver, cutting out fruit is gonna be your quickest way to let that come back and retract a little bit, then you can start introducing the fruit again. Another thing that happens with fruit that we have to pay attention to is it doesn't need insulin. Okay, normally we need insulin to actually utilize carbohydrates or to actually have it eventually convert into fat. Well, that doesn't happen with fructose. Fructose doesn't require insulin. Fructose converts right into a triglyceride without the presence of insulin. So what that means is that triglyceride is going to end up storing fat in your liver a heck of a lot easier. So again, just play it safe, go in moderation. Okay, the next thing that you need to be doing is boosting your glutathione levels somehow. See, glutathione is our body's own inherent ability to detox. 
Glutathione is kind of the master antioxidant in the body. It regulates what our body actually oxidizes and what our body actually recycles and how we end up reusing cells. It's a very, very powerful natural antioxidant. And it has a dramatic effect in the liver. So when our liver is sick or when our liver is scarred or when our liver has a fatty issue with it, it's going to make it a lot easier to recover if we have high levels of glutathione. So how do you boost your glutathione through food? Well, one of the easiest ways is to eat higher sulfur foods. I'm talking about things like eggs, things like garlic, things like broccoli, things like cabbage. They have higher sulfur content. That sulfur content allows it to bind with the acetylcysteine, which is the amino acid that helps create glutathione, to create something known as glutathione disulfate. Glutathione disulfate is a byproduct of glutathione production. So when we have that sulfur, basically we're making it easier to produce glutathione. You can always take a glutathione supplement as well, but a lot of times they're expensive, so people aren't always hot on that. But I do actually recommend them. Okay, lastly, you need to make sure, and this is a huge one, I don't care who you are, that you're taking turmeric. And here's why. I'm gonna break it down with a study so you have some additional credibility versus just me talking to a camera. So this was a randomized, double-blind, placebo study, which is a very, very, very legit study. Took a look at 70 participants. Okay, these 70 participants all had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And what they did is they took half of the subjects and gave them 70 milligrams of curcumin. The other half, they gave a placebo to. And they measured them over the course of eight weeks. Drum roll, please. Get ready for this. This is insane. After eight weeks, those that took 70 milligrams of curcumin had a 78.9% reduction in the fat content of their liver. Almost 100% reduction of the fat content. I'm gonna guess that if they had it continued on, it would have been fully reversed. That's pretty darn amazing. So curcumin right then and there is a very, very, very powerful way to control a fatty liver. Plus, it can also help combat the inflammation that can occur from a fatty liver in the first place. So not only does it solve the problem, but it actually can solve the negative effect that stems from the problem as well. So those are four quick and easy ways that you can start taking care of your liver a little bit more, especially if you're a recovering high carb person. I say that with a grain of salt because carbs are not bad, but we do have to make sure that we're always eating in moderation. And if you are someone that was consuming a very low fat, high carb diet for a while, you might have some work to do in order to recover your organs. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and let me know if you have any ideas for future videos. I'll see you in the next one.